I'm Carrie Thompson, curator for the Carrie Delaney Post on the Virginia On Air Hub. We are here at the Sherwood Community Center at the Redistricting Forum, where we conducted a short interview with Delegate Delaney. Thank you, Delegate Delaney, for taking the time to interview with us. Um, we're just going to do a couple questions. So first off, why did you get involved in politics? So I started my career working in the human service field. I worked with kids in foster care. I was a sexual assault crisis counselor. I worked with an organization that fought human trafficking. And too often in the work that I did, I just found that policy was failing people and was really inspired to get more involved in government and in shaping policy uh, and to be a voice for the people who I felt were often underrepresented in government. What has been your most significant accomplishment to date? I think my most significant accomplishment to date has been uh, passing legislation in a bipartisan fashion that really has helped our community. We, uh, I've been successful passing bills that range from issues that uh, help our elementary school kids get more recess time, uh, closing a sexual predator loophole by uh, prohibiting non-disclosure agreements from being used to silence sexual assault in the workplace, requiring that members of clergy are mandatory child abuse reporters. I think the legislation that I've been able to pass with bipartisan support has a direct impact on uh, the lives of people in Virginia, and that's something we're very proud of. What is the most important new legislation you want to patron for the 2020 General Assembly? So I've got a few legislative items that I'm working on for 2020 that we're really excited about. Um, I'm, I'm really excited to work uh, on some issues that deal with um, our workforce, uh, having some protections uh, for our working families uh, from worker misclassification and wage theft. Also really interested in doing some work on our environment, uh, stopping climate change, moving away from fossil fuels, and doing that by addressing the regional economies that are most affected by the need to transition. What is the question you are most, com or most frequently asked, and how do you reply to this question? I think the question that I'm most frequently asked is just how we balance everything. You know, I've got um, a family with young children and, uh, you know, they're in school. I'm down in Richmond for a couple months out of the year and just how we make that work. And I think that um, one thing that I've seen in these past couple of years since I've been in Richmond is, is having more mothers, having more women in government has really brought a perspective that has often not been represented in um, state houses across this country. And so to, you know, be, be, Doing the juggle that you know all working parents do to make sure that you know we're we're there for our families and um, uh, engaged with our children, and then also you know doing our work. You know that's a juggle that a lot of us can relate to. And I think that bringing that mindset down to Richmond and um, looking for good government and good solutions that uh, support our families, support our children, and um, just make our community stronger. We we bring a unique perspective that I think needs to be in Richmond. What would you recommend to students who want to get more engaged with the democratic process? I think there are so many opportunities to get involved, and that's something that I really want young people to hear, you know, often and early. Um, I don't know the moment where it occurred to me that, you know, I had a voice in government, and I wish that I'd heard it earlier. So I hope that uh, that young people hadn't realized that there's so many opportunities to either get involved with the campaign, get involved with the legislative office, get involved with an issue that you're passionate about. Come down to Richmond and talk to us about the bills that you see uh, coming up for a vote that you either love or, or don't love. Let us know how you feel about these issues and know that you have a voice because I think that is the biggest um, kind of eye-opening lesson that I think any of us that have gotten involved in government have at some point had to realize is that, wow, I might have actually have a voice in this. And, and the truth is that you do and we need you. And um, I, of course, you know, look forward to talking to you about the issues that matter most to you. What are your thoughts on how to address the college affordability issue? So college affordability is a big issue that affects so many Virginians, and um, it's not going to be an easy issue to tackle with just one solution. I think that um, you know we need to require some transparency from the, the state's perspective. We're making investments in our state colleges that I think uh, require that we have a good sense of how those funds are being spent and um, how uh, the, what kind of returns we're getting on those investments um, in terms of you know, our economy, our student growth, and uh, and, and what college affordability you know, looks like in terms of tuition um, raises and, and issues like that. Um, I think that there's also some areas that we can work on with, uh, with the fees that are involved. And, and, but I think it comes down to transparency. I think uh, at the end of the day, we need to make sure that you know, we in the General Assembly have a very transparent sense of what is happening with, uh, with the university's budget that we're investing in, but that so do you, the students, so do the parents, so does anyone who's paying tuition. I think um, we, we want to make sure that they have the opportunity to uh, understand what's happening. Thank you so much, Delegate Delaney, for speaking with us today. Thank you. Thank you very much.